Hello everyone, today we are making hot air balloons. But you're gonna need four sheets of paper, and unlike my usuals where I like to keep things simple, we're gonna have to get some glue, some straight edge of some kind. This will cut your work time by hours. And here I am using a tool that my wife uses for clay. Main point is, as a nice small tip, I don't know if you can see, but it's rounded and it's not jagged, so it won't tear on the paper. We're gonna be using this to make creases later on, so it'll be a lot easier when during the folding process. Now, basically, the basic structure of the balloon itself will require three square sheets of paper. You can make, depending on how crazy you wanna do it, you're gonna have to fold all of these into eights, like a fan, and I prefer to do it in half a half a half, six half sheets. It's a lot easier because you're dealing with a lot of small folds. So, but if you're really patient and you don't want to glue that much and you want to keep it into a simple pattern, three sheets of paper. If you want to mix a nice repeating pattern, you can do, as you can see, I already have parts in the process. That, Pattern of the balloon is going to be yellow, pink, uh, blue, yellow, pink, blue. If you're really crazy, you can start making it to eights or single individual sheets. You, you can make it as crazy and how much time you want to put into it. So three squares into the balloon and then you're going to need one sheet. You're just going to get a small portion of it to make the basket. So let's get started. First thing you need, like I said, I'm going to be doing this in halves. So we're going to get half a square. As Fora mentioned, you can do this without any tools, without any glue, but it is pretty mind-numbingly difficult. And I've made a few of these balloons already, and it's not a zen experience. Normally when you're folding something, every step you make, every little fold and crease you make, there's a purpose and you'll see something taking shape, taking form. It's pretty fun. This thing is pretty mind-numbing. You're just repeating everything to collapse fold the shape into the balloon, so it's pretty boring. There we go, so we got half a square, color side up, fold it in half. There we go, turn it. Same thing, fold it in half. We're gonna start folding this thing into, dividing it into eights. So there's half, folding the sides to the center to make it into quarters. it up and then we're going to start folding this into eights so let's get started i like to do the back side up and then the most simplest method is the fan method when you're making an origami fan just make the little zigzag patterns over and over again I like to fold it once. Come on, focus, focus, focus. There we are. Fold it under, pick up that crease, and fold it to the next crease. Once again, once that crease is folded, flip it under, 
Use that edge, then fold it to the next crease. And the last one. I have it folded into the eight. At this point, you'll see that each top, each part of the fan has little points. So you're gonna have to do this to both ends. Here's the original method. Pick up the point, fold the triangle. Very exciting, right? That's one. And you're supposed to do this for each flap. If you want things nice, accurate, very clean, and you have a lot of time on your hands, this is how you do it. One at a time. And when you're done with that, you're supposed to open it up. Well, let me show you all, all corners with the triangles folded in. It'll look like this. So fold the triangle, fold the triangle, flip it over, fold the triangle, flip it over, fold the triangle. One more time. So fold the triangle, flip it over, fold the triangle, flip it over. Yeah, every corner. After that, you open it up. And right where the triangles meet the center creases, you're supposed to fold it white side up or the back side up. So you get that right where the triangles meet, you fold it up. Now imagine doing that all day every for all these pieces. It's no fun. So, shortcut method. I'll do it on the other side. Turning this back into my eights. What you're gonna be doing are general folds. They're not really perfectly accurate, but it's a lot easier. So, once again, here are the four corners of the fan. I'm just gonna split it in half, two and two, and be lazy about it. Fold the corner down for two flaps at a time. And repeat. So in two folds, I got all four corners done. Once again, I just opened it up in half, fold half down one way, fold half down the other way. And I'm pretty much done with my triangles. Now for the line, grab the triangle using the creases that I mean, the edges of the triangle that are there. I fold it down one way, lift all the triangles back up and fold it down the other way. You don't have to crease this too crazy, it's just a pre-crease or general crease. And look how easy it is to open it all back up since half and half is like flip it all up, all the triangles open up. And there's a pre-crease already right there, so it's a general crease. Using that, it's easier to adjust. And it's already half creased already. And you are save yourself a lot of time and headache. And it's a lot faster too. There we go. At this point, you got the eights, got the corners folded, got the two lines. So color side up, fold it in half. 
You're gonna have the front flap, back flap, front flap, fold it down halfway. While you're at here, that front flap, you just fold it down, fold it to the center again. That back flap on top, just fold it down to meet the center. And it'll look like this. So once again, here's the sheet of paper that's with the eighths done. So fold it in half, front flap halfway down, halfway up, top of the back flap, fold it to the middle, open it all up. Should look like this. And one more fold. You should have your crease right here popping up. Pick up that crease, fold it to the center. So that crease that's popping up, fold it to the center, crease it down, and your paper should look like this. White part, one line and rectangles, two line and rectangles, three lines, empty space, and then open up the back, the bottom flap, one line and uh, rectangles, and you get the little triangles. Now, this next part is where the ruler, the straight edge, or whatever you have in the tool comes in. It's a mind numbing experience. I was using washi paper and then it was really difficult to see the, the creases. What you will be doing is, let me see. You're gonna be folding the creases like this. So, here's the center line, that first row of rectangles, that first rectangle to the left. Let me get up, make sure you guys see this really clearly. First row of rectangles, that first rectangle to the left. Pick the top left corner and you're gonna crease, make a crease diagonally. to that corner. Where I work it, every crease we're gonna be doing, it's gonna be between the be between the first, second, and third. Does not go beyond the third, does not go beyond the first line of, or row of rectangles. And every crease is gonna connect the corners. So the next creases are gonna be first, second, third row of rectangles, and it's gonna be to corner, corner, corner. So it's gonna look like this. Normally, you're gonna have the fun part of holding the color side in front of you or the white side in front of you, either way, as long as you can see the creases. And there's corner and corner, and then you're gonna have to bleed your eyeballs. Oh yeah, figure out your one crease, and then you're gonna have to figure out the next crease, making sure they're accurate. Yeah, it's a fun time. So. After a few hours of that and a few days of trying that, and I came up with the old method of when you have something no fun. Straight edge, tool, paper clip, toothpick, anything. Here's the one with the drawings. So you guys can see. You're gonna follow that shape exactly with the straight edge and tool. And you're gonna use these tools to do a pre-crease. If you want, you can draw with the pencil beforehand too, and just trace over it with a with a tool. Remember, if you're on the ed outside edge of the paper, always work out so you don't tear the paper. If it's your first time doing this, I suggest you draw it and then do this. You can go all the same diagonals, like all the left diagonals first, so you don't have to flip that ruler all over the place. And then when you're done with one direction, do it the other direction. You're 
You're not doing anything crazy. You're not cheating really. This is just gonna make it a lot easier on you mentally. So I just ran over all the diagonal creases with the tool. And then when you flip it over, you can already see the creases kind of being there. And all you do is just reinforce the creases. Look, look how easy it is. I don't have to really guess. I know where they end. I know where they start. And it'll save you a lot of mental anguish and uh, your eyesight, depending on how big your sheet of paper is. This will take you maybe two minutes if you use this method. You deal the other way, it'll take you up to 10 to 15 or maybe longer depending on how comfortable you are in folding all these little hard to see creases. And in that sentence, I already got the pre-creases done. You see how easy that is? And next part we're gonna work on is the bottom. That row of triangles you folded and right above it is a row of rectangles. So here's the white side. Once again, we're folding diagonals starting from the top left corner of the rectangles and we're gonna do this zigzag pattern. And again, I'm just gonna use the ruler. Outside of the paper, we're gonna work our way out so we don't tear it. Like I said, if you don't have anything and you want to find out the hard way how fun this is, you can do all these folds and creases by sight and just by hand. So, the different thing about the bottom creases, the creases on the top, you notice how I had the color side up and was folding it down? The bottom part, we're going to be folding these creases white side and we're going to be folding them down. We're going to be folding towards the color side. They're going to be folded forward. But you see how it e easy it is? I'm not even measuring much. I just use my bottom hand, pop it up, the pre-creases just make it a very straight easy guide when the paper behaves right here. and same thing with the other way and you can see how accurate it is since you're using a good solid straight edge and a good good tool it's almost more, pretty much like working with cardboard when you cut it before you fold it. So, now you got all the creases done. Next part. Turn it back to a fan, so give it a pull. It'll help to straighten out the creases so it forms that fan again. There's my little fan. We're gonna start from the bottom first. So, those diagonals that you folded towards the color, that's what you're gonna be doing. First fold up, crease in, another fold. Up, next crease in. And while you're doing that, you're making sure the thing is Pop it upward. Diagonal up, crease in. Diagonal up, crease in. Diagonal up, crease in. Diagonal up. 
last corner behave. Pretty soon. So it'll look like a little foot when you're done. Next part's gonna be the top. It's gonna look like this. So for all those diamonds that you see and you creased, the center of the diamonds are gonna collapse down the edges of the diamonds are going to be going up so using a hand on the bottom right at the center edges of these diamonds poof it out it'll get ready for your next line of creasing so center of the diamonds are going to collapse in collapse them in collapse them in and the edges of the diamonds are sticking out, so. Collapse, collapse, collapse. Nudge them where you need to. And then poof up the next section. Same thing. Out center of the diamonds collapsing in. Edges up. And give it a flatten. One last time. You got three rolls of uh, rectangles, so you're gonna have three rolls of diamonds. So, edges up, center down, edges up, center down, edges up, center down, and there you go. You completed one out of six. If you do a full sheet of paper, you need three of these. If you do eight, you need a whole bunch of them. It's just how much energy, time, and love you want to put into this. So that's why I suggest doing the shortcut method. It's still pretty accurate. And then using the straight edge and the tool, it'll save you a lot of mental pain and time. If not, it's going to take you an hour for a few pieces. Okay, we got six pieces completed. I just put them in color order of how I'm going to be using them. The next part is we're going to be interlocking all of them. So, grab your first, grab your second, and we're going to open up the right side a little bit. And we're going to be placing one, well, Here's the right edge, first diamond right here. Here's half, here's the first. Right onto it. And those little triangles. Oops, got one caught, there we are. Right over. So basically, one eighths, two eighths. And it goes all the way to the top. Now, for you who wants less headaches as you go along with this, if you want to use glue, this is where you use it. You can glue from, just don't glue around the triangles because you're going to be folding those things to keep the balloon together. You can glue from around the, the diamond part all the way to the, the other diamond part. So you can glue from here to here. Or if you're feeling adventurous and brave, you keep on going. So once you get these two parts locked in. Oops. Yeah, I'm gonna continue trying. Well, I don't know. I think I'll just glue this. It's gonna be a bad time if not. Thank you. 
This last square is driving me crazy. <laughs> okay, there we are. Got all six done. What we are doing next. You got the nice little Long handles on the top, the little short parts on you, facing you at the end. Gonna skip one, fold it in. So we are going to use those creases we made way before. So remember the little triangles you made? We're going to be using those. One corner away, next corner in. The next flap. We're going to be... One corner away, fold it in. Next corner, fold it up. Next flap, you're just gonna keep repeating. Fold it up. Flatten it down. Fold it over, repeat. This will lock in all these flaps.
exciting is it? I'm going to leave that last one alone. Now with that said, color side facing you, you can open it up. Make the two opposite ends meet. It's not going to look pretty for most of the fight, but this part's slipping off. Once you get that top part sorted out, you can finish off the bottom with repeating the fold in. Let's flat fold in. is just not having a good day with me. There we are. Once you battle your balloon to... <laughs> I've made this many times. I've never had it fight me back so bad. So, once you get that done, in the center of the balloons, you'll see all the little white parts of where your old uh, triangle creases are. We're going to do that next. So, you're gonna fold the triangles. Just pick one, starting from anywhere. Fold it one direction. I'm gonna fold the one in to the left. The next triangle, you're gonna fold it. If you fold one left, fold the next one right so the two triangles are pointing at each other. You want that to happen so the two triangles are facing each other so they keep each other in place. So basically you get that. One left, one right. 
go over a flap and just keep repeating the pattern. I got no nails, it ain't helping. Came back with a pair of tweezers. I am not spending my entire mental capacity figuring out how to fold a triangle with no space. There we are. Clean it up. Make sure all the creases are. Wow, that crease just does not want to go where it needs to. So yeah, once you get that part done, your balloon's pretty much finished. Now for the basket, that fourth sheet of paper, we're gonna need to square that's three eighths by three eighths. So the easiest way is to cut it into quarters first. You could tear the square out now, or you could tear it out after you make the measurements. This will turn it into quarters. See, I'm picking this corner, it's square right here. So. This is in quarters. I need three eighths. So, and one more time. I can pick that quarter one, fold it to the center. This is, there we are. So fold it in half. Fold into the quarters, fold into eighths. So that two eighths, pick this edge up, fold it to the center. There's my three eighths. Now I need to, to do that one more time, just repeat. There we are. So one, two, three, one, two, three. There's my three eighths. We're gonna tear that part, little corner out and we're gonna use that for the basket.
There we go. The usual fold everything in half, every shape and or form. Once that's good. Diagonal to diagonal. Open it up so that squishes in. Fold that over. Repeat on the other side. Using the creases we made already. So we're going to make a bird base really fast. Once you get your diamond. We're going to be folding the sides to the center. And we're going to repeat this for all four sides. Flip it over, we're going to repeat sides to center. you're done with that just open the the folds you just made up pick the flap closest to you lift it up and we're gonna use the creases we made and fold the paper in just follow the creases you just made Close that down, flip it over, repeat, get that flat, move it up. And use the creases you made. Squish it down, squish it in. You can clean up the corners while you're at it. And finish off the last side. There we are. Got the usual bird base. Fun part! Where the flaps are. We're going to pick a long side. Fold it to the center. So it'll look like this. Repeat for all four sides. It'll look like this. Now before you do anything else, there's a little butt end right here, right? You'll see the two corners. Oh, the, where am I? There we are. The two corners of this butt end triangle. Use that. And we're going to fold the crease right matching corner to corner. It's corner to corner. We're just going to fold it flat. Open it up, do it again on the other way. This is going to be the bottom of the basket, so you're just going to pre-crease it so it's easier to open up as a square. Now, with those four folds you did, open them up. Back to that original base. You see how these flaps open? Pick the first flap, grab a corner, grab one of the edges right there, and we're gonna flatten. So once again, there's the diamond, there's that first flap, grab that first flap edge, and we're gonna 
open up and flatten. Make sure the middle line of that little triangle matches the line right here in the middle. So when you're done, it'll look like this. There's one, and we're going to do it for the other side. Get the flap, fold it towards the center. If it's not opening up, grab this edge, pull it. It'll start opening up as you flatten. And from here, you can push out on the edges and adjust it so it's centered. And when you're done, it'll look like that. So repeat on the other side. It'll look like this once you're done. Pick either side, just fold it over and fold the sides to the center. It'll look like that. Flip it over, repeat, open it up, and fold the sides to the center. There we go. Now you can open it up. You can pull the points out and pull the points out, squish them. Or you can gently just pull them open. Pencil, toothpick, whatever you have. Open the inside up and flatten the bottom. You can grab Use the tool, pick a side, push it against your thumb. You see what I'm doing with the index? Just push it in, it'll slowly open. And just repeat that for all four sides till you shape it. Ah, I squashed it again right after it. It'll look like that. Okay. So once you get that base kind of flattened out, fold each pedal down inside you can see it's kind of these triangles the corners and they're being kind of fidgety they want to fight they want to tear get something if you have nails they work to fold them in apparently that's too small so let's get the tweezer There we go. Fold them in like that. So that's one. Pencil, pen, anything. Two. Four. So we get a nice little box inside in addition to flattening out the bottom. It's almost like a vase. Now to get the connection points to the balloon, you're gonna have to squeeze these in, pinch it in. And I'll start folding in. Flatten it, lift it up, 
that's one connection point. You can see how that looks. So repeat it for the other three. Pinch, keep a finger right there so it doesn't collapse. And it gives you, see it's not behaving right there. Gotta pinch it in so the paper behaves. Flatten it in there. Get that, repeat. Telling the paper where it needs to go. Pinch it in, flatten it, repeat. Once you fold these up, you got yourself a basket. Now to make this connect to the balloon, you're gonna have to get one at each tip and fold it one direction. There's no exacts on this one, it's a adjustable fold. So when you decide how much you want that balloon hanging, once you get that ready, the bottom of the balloon, there's a lot of little attachment points here. You just slip it in there and you get your basket attached. Personally, I'm gonna be using this balloon in another project, so I'm gonna be doing something more permanent. So when I put these in the crack, I'm just gonna glue it in there. Yeah, when you're done, you can see you put them in the slots down there, and your hot air balloon is done. So, just an FYI, this thing took three days to record. Deal, it's not hard, but it's really, really mind numbing, especially when you're doing so many of these angle folds, doing all these attachments folding it together making sure it don't pop out on you depending on what kind of paper you have how it behaves if you can see your creases this thing is yeah something you wish upon your enemy but it, it comes out really nice there we are so as always thank you for watching and uh if you haven't seen it yet i already turned one of these hot air balloons into a nightlight and it's working really well my daughter really likes it so that's another reason why I made another one today. I'm planning to see what else I can make with these. I still have a lot of extra equipment left to make more uh, lights. I might add some lights with here with some spotlights over the houses. But thanks for watching as always and have a good day guys.